Hey friends, welcome back. This is part two of my massive unboxing video, and if you haven't watched part one already, be sure to check that out. I unboxed a lot of cool items in there, and there were definitely some surprises along the way. So anyway, let's kick off with part two. We have a Tomy. 2012-2011 Reneus, and as you guys can tell, it was originally priced at about $12. Um, I ended up buying it for about $8.50, and this is an interesting item. It's from that Tomy area, uh, excuse me, era. I talked at length in the first part of the video about how, strangely how many Tomy items I had to unbox in this series of unboxing videos, but yeah, this is uh, this is an interesting one. Um, you know, I, I mentioned earlier that. The Steam Team Tomy engines are notorious for having very poor faces, uh, but they really hit it out of the park with the narrow gauge engines, so it's just kind of interesting there. So let's see. I've unboxed, what did I, I unboxed Sir Handel in the first part of the video. That was a Tomy engine. I'm looking off to the side here. I unboxed, um, pretty sure I unboxed something else that was a, to oh, Diesel 10, yeah. And then I also have a couple of more Tomy um, items that I'm going to unbox in part two that you're watching right now. So let's get Reneus out of here. And I only have one of these, and it's kind of interesting. Sometimes when I find rarer, older items, I like to keep them in the box, and then sometimes I'm like, you know what, I'm just gonna take it out of the box. It doesn't really matter. So, I don't know, I did that with Sir Handel. Sir Handel is far rarer than uh, Reneus that you see here. Um, and Reneus, you know, I think the thing that I'll um, bring up in a second here is that uh, Mattel came out with a 2013 version that looks pretty much identical to this one right here. So this is Reneus. I think the common problem with Reneus throughout his entire run in the Thomas Wooden Railway line is that he has just never really had a version that's really been perfect. You know, there's there's a couple of close ones. I really like the original Reneus that was sold in the 90s and early 2000s. That's the one I use in my series. I think it is far superior to the um, maroon colored one with the white wheels. Um, this one right here so far doesn't look too bad, but I have the 2013 Reneus off to the side here that I'm going to bring in and let's take a look. So the face isn't too bad. Um, it is pretty similar to what we see in the TV series. Um, thing with the Tomy engines for the narrow gauge engines, they have the uh, the side rods on the side. And it'll be interesting to compare this one to the uh, Mattel version to see what other details have been added on this one or missing from the Mattel version. One thing, yep, one thing I noticed when I took this out of the box, the, um, the casing around the magnet here is actually loose. It spins around. Maybe you guys can hear it. I don't know if you can really see it, but you can definitely hear it. Um, it's just loose. It, it's like it needs to be tightened almost, but I, it's obviously not that big of a deal. I just noticed that it kind of rattled when I took it out of the packaging. And now that I'm holding it in my hand, it, it you know I, I noticed this is loose. But other than that, uh, pretty good engine so far. Um, kind of looks like this is italicized. Maybe that's just me. It kind of looks like it's the Reneus wording is at a little bit of a slant there. But yes, this is a Tomy engine. So let's bring in, actually I actually have two versions of Reneus I want to compare. This is the very famous um, yellow Reneus from the end of Blue Mountain Mystery. I used this in an episode of my series. These should be identical because they were both made by Tomy. And by the looks of it, yeah, looking pretty identical in the details there. Actually, what's interesting, the box right here, much bigger on yellow Reneus than it is on red Reneus. You guys see that? It's about half the size on normal Reneus. Very, very interesting. And I guess I shouldn't call Reneus red. He's technically orange, but I've just, I don't know, maybe it's just hanging around that first version of Reneus that's made me think he's been red all these years. And I kind of really do think he's still red. Um, the funny thing about my Reneus, my yellow Reneus, it came out of the box like this. It's just got some chips in the paint right there, which is kind of interesting. Um, oh, speaking of which, this, uh, this casing around this Reneus too is also loose. I just kind of grabbed it there and it moves as well. So let's see, off the top of my head, any other major differences? Obviously the color's different. The nameplate is uh, blue, the lining's blue. I can't even remember why Reneus got this new coat of paint. It probably has something to do with he uh, he crashed early on in the movie and something like that. I need to go back and rewatch that stuff. 
Um, other than that, yeah, these you would think they would be identical. They were made by the same company around the same time. Uh, one other weird difference is dome right here um, on Yellow Reneus. This is unfinished. This one has a little of a, of a glossy, uh, excuse me, texture. So yeah, other than that, look really, really similar. I'll take Yellow Reneus away. I totally forget he exists sometimes. And then let's bring in, we got 2012, 2013 Reneus. These were made by different companies. So uh, 2013 Reneus has a bigger face. Uh, yeah, I don't really like the face on this one. Already I give the advantage to the Tomy one. A um, little bit wider. Let's see, details wise, yeah, no side rods. Um, no, whatever this detailing is, you want to call it right in there. It's absent there. The box is bigger. There's also an additional line. Maybe that's like a, a handrail or something like that. And a little bit different detailing around the cab area. Yeah, on the back, there's a different color right there. Uh, maybe it's time I do a whole discussion devoted to Reneus because he's he's had actually a couple of different models within the past year. I guess if I think if we get another version of Reneus, which I think is very doubtful at this point, then I think we got like four or five or six versions to compare. So, yeah, these two are two are uh, pretty similar, but uh, the face on this one is just a little too creepy for my liking. <laughs> so yeah, I do give the advantage to the Tomy Reneus, just a little bit more detailing here and there, but this one's not bad either. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure on the color thing. These guys look to be the same color, kind of an orangish color. This one just seems a little bit more, slightly more stocky than uh, Tommy Reneus over here. You can actually see this does not line up entirely. It, Reneus seems a little bit fatter, in my opinion, than the Tommy one. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Mattel one, not bad, but I will have to say, Tommy hit it out of the park once again. In terms of detailing, yes. In terms of what Reneus actually looks like, maybe no, but we can't be too picky. I think maybe, I, I definitely prefer the older Reneus shape from the 90s. I felt like, you know, Reneus is a skinny engine and these newer versions make him look like he's he's chubby and he takes up a lot of space and it's like, no, like, you know, Reneus and Duncan, very similar engines, they're, they're very slender all the way back to the cab area and these new versions, they just don't really encapsulate that in my opinion. So. Glad I got to unbox this. Um, it's so funny, I completely ignored these Tomy engines when they came out like six, seven years ago, and here I am getting them into my collection um, just so we can compare and contrast the different ones. So, tell you what, that version of Renee is not too bad, honestly. Definitely a little bit of a different one, but I'm glad to have it in my collection. I'm feeling a little bit bold, so let's go for it. Let's unbox this big destination uh, called the Echo Tunnel. This is a destination that's always caught my eye. I thought it was a little bit interesting. At the very, very, very top up here, it says 2008 Learning Curve Brands. Um, I don't believe this has a specific affiliation to a specific episode, contains Echo Tunnel, that's kind of funny. Um, but nonetheless, it's kind of a cool destination, partly because the amount of detail that's in here. It looks like a rocky face that you would see at the beginning of a mountain or something like that. So it, it would kind of be a cool way to double for like a muffle mountain or something like that. That was kind of my first impression. So let's get this out of the box. I found this on my East Coast track travels a year ago. So I have had this destination in my possession for quite a while. However, I saved it because I wanted to unbox it on camera. So we got some instructions here. Echo tunnel. Yeah, there's a, a voice feature. Um, I'm not going to get into all that just because I'm not super, super passionate. It looks like it takes three AA batteries off to the side there. It's just so you know. Yep. And dated 2008. There we go, Delane. All right. So, uh, yeah, I've had this item in my possession for a while, and when I said in my update video that I wanted to redo my layout just because I had a bunch of stuff that um, I haven't been able to feature, this is one of the things. I think this is a pretty cool destination. I may be wrong. I think I just gave myself a paper cut. <laughs> so uh, we'll see how that goes later in the video. We got some twist ties to undo here. Am I doing it? I didn't even really check to see if I was doing it the right way. I think I am. Here we go. So that, well, geez, that's going to be fun to get out of there. All right. Got another set all the way at the top. 
flip it around so you guys can see. Yeah, I love collecting Thomas Wooden Railway if it wasn't obvious. There we go, I'm going the wrong way. I love collecting Thomas Wooden Railway. Um, and the engines don't take up too much space, honestly. You know, they're fairly small and compact and you can throw them all on a giant bin or, you know, hopefully you aren't actually throwing them all in there, but if you do, you're doing it gently. Um, but the destinations, man, they start taking up a lot of space. I have several bins devoted to my Thomas Wooden Railway collection. And actually, all of my engines will fit in, pretty close to fit in this one giant bin that I have. Um, the destinations, however, take up about, let me look over there, take about six or seven of those same type of bins. All right, I'm struggling here. So, where are my scissors? I don't know if this is gonna work yet. I'm gonna have to bring out my heavier duty ones. Nope, I'm not gonna take it either. All right. <laughs> oh, there we go, I was close anyway. I get why they do this because this type of destination has an open face packaging. Whereas if it was like completely sealed in a box, like the, if you remember from the last, uh, the first part of this unboxing video, like the, the scrapyard was completely inside the box. None of it was out to view in public. Same with the cement works. You don't really have to tie stuff down because, you know, it's, it's in the box. It's completely safe. But then I'd say somewhere, somewhere along the 2006, 2007 range, um, let me get this out of here. Oh, cool. It just completely came out. That's great. All right. Let me throw this here. Yeah, stay tuned for the end of this uh, part two because I'm going to show off all the garbage we've accumulated. So really quickly, they adapted that new style of packaging, that open style. You know how we could specifically see this version of the destination in the box. Um, there's, a, you know, there's a definite amount of psychology involved in something like that because like if a kid sees the item and they see it and they're able to touch it, they want it more. Whereas if it's hidden away in the box, for example, I'll just grab the cement works box. You, you just have to believe that's what, in, that's what's inside this. You can actually see, and it makes you want it even more. However, since it's open, they got to employ some, uh, different techniques to try to make sure that it's it's not stolen. So here we go, we got the Echo Tunnel. I love this destination. There's a fair amount of plastic, um, but I think we've kind of moved on from that. I used to be really critical of plastic, but now it's just whatever. Since it's out in the open, it's a little bit dusty right there. You can kind of see it's on a completely plastic base. Um, and then the, the wood part where the tracks are right here just kind of fit in nice and gentle. I guess this is a, a six inch piece of track in there. Yeah, I'm guessing. Batteries are long dead, yes, because what, this is 10, 15 years old. That's the battery compartment right there. Um, I'm actually, let's see, I do have a screwdriver here. I do not have any batteries, so I'm not gonna place batteries in here, but if it'll let me, I'm gonna take these old batteries out, because at one point, this was on display, and I thought I unscrewed it. Okay, maybe I didn't do it enough. One, at one point, this was on display, and kids were coming up and pressing the, the sounds it makes and everything like that. So, all right. What do we got going on here? Usually these things just kind of pop open. This, I unscrewed it. You can see it spinning around right there. Um, problem is I have no fingernails. So, <laughs> Oh, there we go. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Why am I trusted to do these unboxing videos? Now, okay, I got a screwdriver for this. Aha, oh, there's a, a red ribbon. What the heck? Oh, I bet you're supposed to pull, oh. <laughs> I don't, I'll have to take a look at the footage. That might've just smacked my camera right in the lens. And if it didn't, it was definitely close. I think this ribbon, oh. <laughs> Okay, this <laughs> this unboxing video has gone off the rails here. That's actually a very cool uh, piece of technology. It's not just something that, I, I, I don't know, I, I, I guess this is an official thing. It's the way that the batteries are stored. They're, there's one at the bottom here. And it would it is it would be very difficult to get that out of there. But this this ribbon, this string, 
allows you to just uh, <laughs> launch some batteries out of here. That is particularly interesting. Okay, <laughs> I'm having way too much fun with this. So, um, unfortunately, I do not have any batteries nearby. It would be cool to hear the, the what type of sounds it makes and everything like that. I don't think I'm gonna worry about that right now, but fun fact, the Echo Tunnel has a piece of purple ribbon just hidden inside. So, um, these batteries are long dead. Let's move everything aside. I'll give kind of my last thoughts and summary on here. I love this rock face. Yes, it's plastic, but great detailing there. And on the side, I am guessing these had two different purposes. One was maybe a chugging noise. I don't know if this was a, I don't see a speaker where you could record your own voice. That what That's kind of what that seems to imply right there. But maybe it's maybe that's like a human noise, like like workmen talking. There's a speaker inside there, so that's where it would come from. I'm guessing we get some human noises like workmen talking or drilling or blasting, and then we also have some engine noises like chugga 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 when an engine comes through. So this is really cool. Um, there's a reason why I saw this on the shelf, and I paid like $40, $45 for this, and I it was on the East Coast, so I had to figure out a way to get it home. Um, but I actually really, really like this. If I'd had this item in my collection 10 years ago, I probably would have hated it because of the amount of plastic. But the detailing here is super, super nice. And I love this danger sign facade area. Man, yeah, I was kind of, uh, I think it would be cool if this folded down and you were able to get kind of a peek inside the tunnel. But regardless, still very, very nice. Um, I can, uh, I'm definitely using this. I'll find a place for it on my next layout. So other than that, besides me launching batteries at my camera by accident, that's what I love about these impromptu videos. Anything can happen. This is a very nice destination. I don't see it a whole lot on eBay, and if I do, it's used, but this one came brand new. And uh, yeah, this was a good purchase. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. And it's so funny, I used to be so against plastic, but I absolutely love this destination. This is really, really nice, and it's fairly compact. And, you know, as long as you got space to work with on the sides, you know, if you have a six inch piece of track right there on your layout, you just take it away and slide this one in and it, it's just kind of like a random rock face. So, wow, very, very impressed with this item. Definitely a pleasant surprise. Um, sorry for launching batteries at the camera. <laughs> These are long dead. I wanted to get them out of there though because batteries tend to leak and they make a mess. So anyway, that was a bit of a long unboxing video. Let me clear off the table. We'll move on to our next item. So I don't think anything's going to top the Echo Tunnel for a while, but let's move on to something hopefully a little bit safer and less surprising. Thomas Wynn Friends Wooden Railway Diesel. I actually found this up in Canada. Uh, when I went on my East Coast travels um, a little while ago, I did go up to Canada for a few days. I actually stayed with Oliver and Duck at his house. If you guys know, not Oliver and Duck, Oliver Duck, a.k.a. Ted, um, somebody I've known online for a very long time. And um, this box artwork is actually very, very cool. Um, it's definitely an international um, box artwork. This version of Diesel is very interesting. It's from 2017. Um, for that very small bit of time that they redid some of the engines. A lot of the engines have smaller faces and their faces are very, very weird because it's like Mattel reduced the size of like Thomas and Percy's face, but they didn't reduce the size of like the eye paint that they were using so you get these engines with really 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 weird faces unfortunately however the back of this box is full of really interesting information um i have you know we got english i i don't know unfortunately and i don't know that one either but um there's all sorts of of different languages here so if you guys could provide me with uh, maybe some context and some information as to what we're looking at here. I mean, it looks, I'm guessing, I'm guessing since this is from Canada, it's the international version, there's got to be French on here somewhere. Uh, maybe Spanish, maybe, I, I can't see a whole lot, but the copyright here, which is very important, 2016. So here we go. Imported by, Importe par, Mattel Canada Inc. Uh, forgive me if I say that wrong, Mississauga? I'm hopefully saying that. And yeah, I actually did find this. I want to say I found this in a toy store in Mississauga um, around, oh boy, what's the town? It wasn't Toronto. It wasn't Hamilton. Maybe it was Mississauga. I'm not sure. Anyway, I found this in Canada, um, but a very interesting item because... 
This was only sold for a very short amount of time. And on the side here, you'll see $14.99. That's actually Canadian. And yeah, you know, the exchange rate ex uh, changes all the time, but that's actually looking, you're looking at about, you know, $11, $12 right there. So it's actually a little bit cheaper. So I'm taking this out of the box because if it wasn't obvious from the, um, the first part of this video, I may be doing a discussion on diesel in the future, maybe even diesel 10. That's a little bit of a secret. This version of diesel is weird. Um, let's see, man, what's with all the, I, I keep finding these engines with scuff marks. I just think it's part of the declining quality of these toys as we've gone on, unfortunately. Underneath, I mean, even like the name starting to, it looks like it's chipping off or fading. I mean, look, there's, that looks like glue. I mean, what is going on? This is really bizarre, honestly. Um, this uh, diesel definitely has an unfinished texture. It's not glossy at all. It's just like your typical wood. This was definitely around that era. I mean, this was the last version. If, if you want to call Wooden Railway and Wood two separate merchandise lines, which I completely understand if you do, this was the last version of diesel produced. So their Mattel was definitely in, you know, cost-cutting, cost-saving mode, and they were just stripping away everything but the bare necessity. So the one thing with this, this diesel compared to uh, the previous version of diesel that was sold the Mattel diesel did have a smiling face, and the face is a lot better than this one. But I'm also pretty sure it had a red buffer beam there. In fact, I don't want to I didn't really want to do this because I want to save this for a special dedicated video, but this is what I'm talking about. The red buffer beam. Um, first version of diesel did not have the red buffer beam. This second version of diesel brought it. Um, was it you know it included that red buffer beam. Third version of diesel, we can call the day of the diesels version has it. The Mattel version has it, but then this last version gets rid of it. So it's really interesting to see if people like it, if people don't like it. Diesel in the TV series, I don't know about the railway series off the top of my head. Um, in the TV series, he definitely has a red buffer beam, but then some people like this simplistic look. This is definitely reminiscent to the very first version of diesel that was released in the 1990s. Um, yeah, other than that, an unfinished texture, you know, there's there's just these, it doesn't bother me because I'm not going to use this in my series or anything, but it's it definitely makes you wonder what was going on behind the scenes. Um, you know, it's like, a, it's like a toy that's 85, 90% of the way there. If they could just, you know, clean it up, make it look nice. Um, I think we'd have a nice quality toy on our hands, but yeah, yeah, we, I mean, when this stuff started coming out and even the reduction of the faces, people say it was so that Mattel could reduce the amount of plastic that was being used, but it was such a minimal amount of plastic that was being taken away. And I don't really understand that. So I automatically don't like this version of diesel because he's smiling. Diesel really doesn't smile. It bugs me, but that's a whole nother story. Other than that, it's not, it's not terrible. Um, it's just interesting because diesel started out without the red buffer beam and then they gave it to him And then all of a sudden on this version that was sold for like six months. It's it's gone. So Very very interesting. Um, I think that's all I have to say about diesel. Not a bad item um, Especially considering the the unpainted wood version that came after this was a total disaster um, But definitely not my favorite version of diesel either. If you guys know anything about me, you know that I love track and switches and buffers and ramps, and this accessory pack has it all. Um, I actually found this uh, price tag up there, says $9.99, competitive estimated value $20. Um, I found this at a place called Tuesday Morning, which I have talked about in the past. And this is a pack that was sold at Toys R Us for a very, very long time. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. I can't remember when I got this. It's been in my collection for over a year. Um, but I will say, when I when I say it's been over a year, you know, obviously anything that was in my collection before the previous unboxing video was unboxed in that video. So, you know, I've had this for a while. Um, but I'm guessing that this was originally sold at Toys R Us and then, you know, all that Thomas Wooden Railway stuff has to go somewhere when wood started coming in. And then we totally lost Toys R Us here in the USA. And I know people in the comments are going to be like, oh, it's coming back and I'll believe it when I see it. But 
Anyway, I absolutely love this accessory pack because as someone who builds layouts, you always need buffers and ramps. These crossings, not so much. I have probably close to 10 of these now, um, kind of overkill. This is pretty handy. Some people like this, some people don't. And then I prefer the older stop sign and the older um, crossing signs that were painted. But regardless, they're still really nice to have. So um, I found this at Tuesday morning, which if you guys don't know, it's like a discount store. It's basically where all of the overstock merchandise from stores all over the place goes. Um, it's a whole variety of things, but they actually, sorry, really loud. Uh, there we go. Now I can talk. So it's basically a giant overstock store and they come in and they um, pick off famous stores inventory and they sell it at a reduced price and so i have seen thomas wooden railway stuff sold there i've bought a ton of thomas wooden railway stuff from tuesday morning i've seen very limited track master stuff and i have seen adventures the one thing i have uh not yet seen at tuesday morning which could change as time goes on i have never seen any thomas wood items sold there which is really peculiar because all those engines were brought in in such a hurry and then toys r us closed and then right around that time um, we started getting painted Thomas Wood engines. So it's like, where did all those unpainted Thomas Wood engines go? I presume they either went back to Fisher Price and they're sitting in a warehouse somewhere or blah, blah, blah. But anyway, enough about that. Let's talk about this accessory pack. For $10, this is great value. Even, even at Toys R Us, I would buy these and I would wait till there was a sale or if I had a coupon or something. But even 20 bucks, yeah, it sounds like a lot just for some miscellaneous track pieces, but these are important when it comes to building a layout. This piece of track right here, it's basically, it can act as a few different things. It can be a male-male connector. It can be a female-female connector, which if you build layouts, you will know are very, very important. Um, you run into all different types of track configurations and connections that you need to overcome. So male-male, male-female, uh, male, excuse me, male-male, female-to-female, and then it can also just act as, I'd say, what? This is a six-piece inch of track? Geez, I don't know. I'm guessing four, six... I think it was two, two, four, six. Anyway, um, if I'm wrong, you guys will correct me. I think this is a six inch piece of track, but since it has these interchanging pieces in here, you can turn it into a couple of different things. So I don't know if you're building a layout and you don't have any you know, connections to make, you just use this as a regular piece of track. The blue things on the side here allow you to twist and turn and you know change the connection points. Some people don't like these. I didn't like these at first, but I've kind of grown used to them. And honestly, when I put this on my carpet, it kind of sinks in and it, you can't really see it a whole lot. So that's a cool addition. Let's talk about this crossing here. So for a long time, let's see, we got 2012 Mattel. For a long time, uh, especially in the learning curve era, these crossings were great because obviously you can have two lines inter uh, intersect each other, but then underneath they had the road part. So if you had some road things you want to connect, that would be useful as well. Unfortunately though, I think when Mattel came along, they just got rid of that part because they weren't releasing any road destinations or road track or anything like that. The interesting thing, however, is that on regular Thomas track, like a six inch piece of track or even an eight inch piece of track in the Mattel era, for a while, they were sold with the road on the back. And then as time, excuse me, as time went on, that started to disappear as well. But a crossing like this, very nice for a Thomas Wynn Railway layout. Um, I love, I love putting these crossings in with um, different types of gauges, like the standard gauge line going this way and the narrow gauge line, or even you could do like the Arsdale line or Coldy Fell or whatever you want to do. Um, still a very nice piece, a great place for accidents to happen as well. Let's talk about these signs. They're not my favorite. I've got a bunch of these. I prefer the older style, uh, fully painted sign that said stop right here. And then this was a fully painted yellow sign that looked pretty similar to this. However, I think they got rid of the stop so that they could sell these internationally because this is kind of an international symbol for don't go over here. Um, but this is definitely a predecessor to Thomas Wood. I mean, <laughs> really very, very minimalistic painting done and the design is a little bit unfinished. So yeah, I guess we should have seen it coming. And these ramps, um, you know, one of my pet peeves is when people be, uh, build layouts and they just have tracks that just kind of run on to nothing and they just stop. 
This is more of an appropriate way for you to kind of make a siding. Um, so I'm always looking for more of these. We have a male and a female included here. And it's just more of, it's a classier way, in my opinion, of ending a track. If you have a siding that you don't know what to do with, instead of just having the straight up standard track just end like that, it looks like you, you, were, you came along and you didn't really know what you were building. Then you put this on here, oh, it's a siding. And there's obviously an opportunity for accidents to happen and troublesome trucks to get pushed off and all that. And finally, we got some buffers. Again, this is a classier way, in my opinion, to end a line. This looks like you just ran out of ideas and stopped midway. This looks like um, this looks like an actual siding. And then this looks like something from Enterprising Engines um, Self-Fulfilling Prophecy Part 2. <laughs> anyway, so um, I love this accessory pack because it just has these essentials that you need. The, the, the bigger your layouts get and the more destinations and track and engines you include, you'll find yourself needing more and more of these. When I build layouts, I try to keep these until the very end because I don't just want to start off building a layout and putting sightings here and sightings there and then you get halfway through your layout build and then you're all out of switches and buffers and it just kind of turns into a mess. So um, I tell you what, these packs severely underrated in my opinion and the fact that I found it for $10 makes me really happy. So thanks for letting me um, ramble along about buffers and ramps and crossings and intersections and all this stuff for a couple of minutes. Um, this stuff's getting harder and harder to find with the wood releases. They haven't even made any buffers. I don't believe that connect to the new wood track. They do have ramps. Um, that's my cat coming down the stairs, the jingling of the bells. Um, they do have ramps in the Thomas Wood line, but they're plastic and they don't look good at all. And they're almost encouraged on all of the sets that you see. It is just very, very normal for the track pieces to just end. And it's almost like Mattel's just like, yeah, we don't know. We know that you guys don't have enough track to build an actual uh, continuous layout that connects to itself. So wherever you feel like it, just put these plastic ramps and your adventure can continue on the floor. And that is just a giant no-no in my opinion because we're talking about trains here. Trains run on the track. These should only be used in the most dire circumstances. So anyway, that's I'll get off my soapbox and let's move on to our next item. Let's take a look at another engine that I found at Tuesday morning. This, <laughs> I can't believe this is a thing, but here we are. This is Timothy in that 2017 style packaging. Oh my goodness. Uh, for a long time, people just thought this version of Timothy was a prototype because I think he appeared on a Superstation box or something like that without his side plates. Um, and then I was actually at a train show in 2018. I was um, displaying a Trackmaster layout that I had built. And I'm friends with these people who, uh, Kansas Depot, who um, go around the country selling all this Thomas stuff at train shows. And they actually had this for sale. I bought a couple of them and then I later found it at Tuesday morning for, I forgot, $7.99. And yeah, that, that you know competitor price right there, or the competitive price, whatever you want to call it, $14, yeah, that's about normal. So this version of Timothy, wow. Um, I have one of these still in the box, um, but yeah, I found one of these at Tuesday morning, couldn't really pass it up. This thing is just weird. I mean, if there, if, there, if there needs to be any more proof that the Thomas Wood Railway line was going off the rails right around 2016, 2017, this is, this is all that you need. There's a lot of things missing. It, it's unique, that's for sure. I'll, I'll give them that. It's definitely unique and it catches your eye. But is this what Timothy is supposed to look like? And if you say yes, then I have some questions for you. I mean, this is, this is just weird. To further prove my point, I'm gonna bring in the Timothy that was sold by Mattel. Oh man, Timothy's dusty. Um, sold by Mattel. In, um, by himself, and then he was also sold in the, the Fossil Run set, I want to say, maybe even in a few other things. So let's take a look here. First off, face-wise, um, I give the face advantage to this one. Um, this isn't a bad face. That doesn't really look like Timothy, though. It looks like one of those 2017 faces that they changed for no reason. When you move to the side here, you start to see some changes. Obviously, the plastic side plates are gone. Um, cab area right here actually looks a, a tiny bit bigger than this version. The riding has been moved up. This area is a lot smaller. Uh, the dome is more squashed in. It's not as prominent. 
yikes uh, on the front here forgot to mention look at the lamps the lamp is not even uh, colored in on this one boy that is oh man i knew it was bad i didn't realize it was this bad um because the side plates are gone this version of timothy is skinnier um but you move around to the side here if anything they did add some detailing right here i'm guessing this detailing is supposed to represent this so sort of in a uh, Tomy 2012 thing with the narrow gauge engines, they moved up. What the details that are technically supposed to be right here, like the side rods, they moved up to here. So they're still present, just in sort of a different form. But guys, I, this is, uh, it's unique, that's for sure. <laughs> it catches your eye. This is, in my opinion, first of all, this wins without a doubt. I love the red. Uh, I'm still going to be using this in my series without a doubt. No contest, no question. This is just a weird item to have. It does seem like a prototype. It seems like something that wasn't thought through all the way. It is just uncomfortable to look at. I mean, I, I can think of no other reason why they got rid of the side plates except for that they were looking for a way to cut costs. They're like, oh, yeah, Timothy has side plates, but um, nobody will notice that, so let's just bring him in like this. This is, unfortunately... I mean, it's like imagine if, if Toby was introduced without side plates. And we don't have a Thomas Wood version of Toby. But honestly, if if to, uh, Thomas Wood Toby did come out, it would he would not have the side plates. Um, they would cram him into the details right there. This is um, honestly very disturbing to look at. But it, it does have a prototype vibe to it. It definitely has an incomplete, we didn't think this through type of finish going on here. Um, yeah, I'm thinking, I'm honestly thinking like this, if they made a Thomas Wood version of Timothy that was fully painted, this is what it would look like. I mean, maybe, maybe this is what we should even call that, honestly. Boy, not a whole lot of good things to say here, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> this cab area, it looks like curtains on a stage. Maybe that's just me. That's what I've always thought. Yeah, Timothy was always going to be a tough engine to design in wooden railway form. Mattel did a great job here, but on this one, unfortunately, uh, they really missed the mark. I'm glad to have this in my collection. It's You're a weirdo, Timothy, but oh my goodness. Let, let's just say this was not released back in 2013. Let's be thankful we got this one and that this wasn't the final, the final one. Or, excuse me, the first one that we all had to accept universally. So yeah, that's that's a bit. This is weird. Um, I'll let you I'll let you guys have your say on this in the comments. But without a doubt, I'm going to continue to use 2013 Timothy in my series and beyond. So we've looked at Tommy Reneus and Tommy Sir Handel in the first uh, two parts of this unboxing video. Now it's time for Tommy Peter Sam. Um, I found this, actually I did not personally find this. It was sent to me by Ed's Trains. I think he found it in that same store as those risers from earlier on. 2011 Tommy. Um, this will be an interesting comparison. I have the 2008 version of Peter Sam, which I have used in my series for a very long time. And by the way, $11.99, that's not a bad price. Um, I've used that 2008 version for a very long time. Uh, but let's see. We'll have to see if this is something that I, I want to transition over to. So let me adjust the camera. I do have 2008 Peter Sam standing by, and we'll take a better look at this once we get done with the in-hand appraisal. So first of all, side rod detailing right there. The paint color looks really good. Um, the face, yeah, that looks like CGI Peter Sam's face. I love the red in the front here. I believe there's also red on the back. Oh boy, this is looking really good, honestly. Um, <laughs> the top here, um, I'm, guess, I'm guessing I could be totally wrong. I'm guessing this is supposed to represent his whistle. And this, because this is the dome, and so that detailing right there is supposed to represent the whistle. I tell you what, um, Tomy was either hit or miss on a lot of their things, and the narrow gauge engines they they nailed. These are absolutely beautiful. Tomy UK, wow! I think I'm going to bring in uh, learning curve Peter Sam from 2008. Let's take a look here. All right, first things first. The name plates are a little bit different. A little more detailing up here. The uh, I'm guessing these are handrails for the cab are painted different colors. 
Um, yep, side rods, I don't know what that's supposed to represent, but yeah, side rods much clearer over here. The detailing on the inside, a little bit different. All right, face-wise, let's see. I love both of these faces because I think they are completely accurate to what Peter Sam looked like at the time each of them was made. This is 2008, this is still the model era, and that's what Peter Sam looked like. And this is Peter Sam from the CGI series, and that's what he looks like. So, uh, it's hard to pick a favorite, honestly. I'll spin them around here. Um, when I started my series back in 2008, the only version of Peter Sam that existed was the one without his special funnel. So I used that one, and then 2008 came along, and they it was like a re-release, limited time only type deal um, for these two. Wow, these are, this is gonna be hard. Uh, kinda like with, what, Kind of like with Sir Handel. Oh, so actually, there is no red on the back of Peter Sam here. It's only on the front. That's interesting to note. But there is still, I guess you could call that lining, whereas this version of Peter Sam has nothing. Um, the tops look very similar, except for the fact that uh, 2012 Peter Sam, which is the one on top, has this detailing up here. Wow, still though, considering, I guess they aren't made by different companies because um, Learning Curve and Tomy kind of became the same thing, but still, I am I am very, very impressed with that uh, 2012 Tomy Sir, uh, Peter Sam. Let's see, uh, I'm going to kind of leave this one up to you guys, kind of like with Sir Handel. Um, I really don't know which version I should use. I've used this version of Peter Sam for such a long time. There's nothing really wrong with it. Usually I replace a character in my series because there's something wrong with the old one. There's something lacking. There's something missing. This one, there's not really a whole lot missing. It's just that this one has more detail. It, I guess it just kind of comes down to the face. So, I don't know, guys. Um, in the comments below, let me know what you think I should do. I'm always a little bit more partial to the engines that have been in my series for a lot longer. So, if I'm if I'm unsure of what to do, I will probably just keep that 2008 Peter Sam uh, in my series until something pushes me over the edge. But wow, this this is a beautiful a beautiful version of Peter Sam. I rat on Tommy all the time for bringing us hideous Thomas Edward Henry Gordon James Percy. Toby's face was all right, but even Emily's face, all of the Steam Team faces from around this time were horrible. But whoever was in charge of the narrow gauge department did a fantastic job. Simply incredible. It's going to be a tough decision, guys. Leave your comments below and let me know what I should do. We're moving right along in this massive unboxing video. Let's wait. It's no time getting to meet our next engine. Probably one of my least favorite engines ever introduced into the Thomas and Friends series. Sorry, the camera's a little off, but it'll make sense when I say get it out of the box. $21.99 for Ferdinand, the Mattel version. Um, I actually, I have taken a look at this item online before, and the face is better than the um, Learning Curve one, in my opinion. The face is a little bit better. And kind of like with Dash, I absolutely despise the Logging Locos, but it's getting to the point where you either buy them now or you don't buy them at all. So here we are. We have got Fisher Price, Mattel, Ferdinand, Looks a bit unfinished, first glance. Let's take a look at the tender here. See the painting around the edge here? I've seen a lot better from Mattel. Ferdinand's tender. Yeah, he burns He burns wood, he burns logs. Yeah, this is uh, pretty unfinished in my opinion. Not one of the better, better ones that I've seen. But, I mean, this isn't even, this was, uh, this is not first wave Ferdinand. It didn't come with a pamphlet. But still, um, maybe this was introduced later, later uh, along. So, honestly, I have no interest in Ferdinand. Don't really care a whole lot. I think the face is better, though. Uh, the lamp, lamp is pretty good. Um, I've known a couple of people who have taken this off and used it for custom. So, if you're in the, if you're in the, the mood for a, a custom lamp on your custom engine, then, Look no further than 2013 Ferdinand. Yeah, this this will be a short um, unboxing segment from me. Just not a whole lot to discuss. Plastic bogies. The paint here, I mean, in some places, it still looks a bit unfinished, in my opinion. It's like we just got, like, some specks of... I don't know. It's, it's like the whatever painting machine they were using was kind of running low whenever this engine came up on the production line. So, yeah, Ferdinand... I despise him quite a bit. We also got a scuff mark here. 
<laughs> but here's the thing, and I don't know if I mentioned this uh, during Dash's review, or Dash's unboxing, but if I ever, for whatever reason, whatever compels me to introduce these guys into my series, I probably am going to use the Mattel versions because I do think they look a little bit better. I think the think the uh, the faces are a little bit more on point. I mean, that looks more like Dash, and Ferdinand's always kind of had this dumb look on his face. So, man, I, it's been a long time since I've taken a hard, good look at the... Uh, at the the versions of the logging locos that I have right now, I could just care less about these guys. But here we are, and just nice to have them in my collection. So anyway, there's Ferdinand. Not a whole else left to say. Um, I guess he's getting a wood model. I remember seeing a prototype picture float floating around out there, and of course he's been shrunk down. Um, don't know if that's still the case because that was the unpainted Ferdinand. So who knows? This this may be the last version of Ferdinand. I, ever since Brenner took over the show, ever since around 2014, 2015, they have cut back a lot on the Logging Loco merchandise, which kind of makes me happy. Although I think they did introduce Adventures Ferdinand and Adventures Bash, and maybe not Bash, but definitely Dash, I want to say. But it's, it's definitely not as crazy as it used to be. So maybe we're finally rounding a corner where these engines have lost their popularity. Um, which makes me very happy because I cannot stand these engines in the slightest. So there you guys have it, 2013 Fisher Price Mattel Ferdinand. One other thing, we got some lining issues right here. I wouldn't call that a factory error. That's just <laughs> that's just quality control. Yeah, on both sides. That's just nice quality control from Mattel. So um, yeah, whenever you know this is this is wood right here. This is plastic. So you know, unless you get it lined up perfectly, whenever you have something that continues from one section to the other, you got to get it lined up. Otherwise, it's going to look weird. But honestly, on a model like Ferdinand, this this is kind of par for the course. I wouldn't really expect anything perfect. You know, the 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 speckled paint and the mess up there. Yeah, that's that's pretty normal. I'm not that surprised. So Ferdinand, I'm glad. I, I'm I'm kind of happy to have you in my collection. But um, I think I'm going to keep you off the screen for the time being. What if I told you guys there was a version of Reneus out there that I did not own? You would probably say, oh, maybe. Some of you would say maybe not. This is actually a version of Reneus I do not have. There's a, kind of an interesting story. Um, I know we just unboxed Tommy Reneus, and that one completely blew me out of the water. This one I'm not expecting much, but it's Reneus with the Rock Crusher cars. We did a three pack in the last unboxing video. I wanted to do one in here as well. I bought it for about $30. I found this at a store. I was hanging with Enterprising Engine 93 and Jolly Good Film Ideas. And um, these guys had actually been to this store before, so they were like, yeah, they got a ton of Reneus with the Rock Crushers. So I ended up buying one. It's dated 2004, so very early on. I mean, this is 15 years old. Holy cow. Um, what I was talking about, um, when I was talking about the Echo Tunnel, you know how that version of the toy was, um, open. You could see it, you could touch it. This is before they introduced that Thomas and the Stinky Cheese style packaging that was clear and you could see the engine. So you just have to hope, when you bought one of these, you just have to hope that everything's okay with it. So, very nice box. Really like the box. Um, definitely gonna keep that. And then this is what it looked like inside. This is just so simple and honestly not very magical. Do we got a character card in here? Oh, yes, we do. Reneus with Rock Crusher. And yeah, this version of Reneus is pretty awful. Working at the quarry is one of the most important jobs on the island of Sodor. Reneus can be relied on to work with the Rock Crusher to grind the island's boulders into gravel for the roads. We talking about you know, the boulder we all know or just generic boulders? That's kind of funny. That'd be an interesting story. Reneus takes his revenge on boulder. So very, very cool. All right, let's 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 pop this out of here. Yeah, this is um, kind of interesting. These three packs from this mid-2000s era, they don't make a whole lot of sense, honestly. The ones that make sense off the top of my head are like Whiff and the Garbage Cars and... That's about it. Everything else was just, they were just weird items. So uh, it's a three pack. We got Reneus here. Oh boy, I thought that was, I thought that was actually on the, the toy there. Uh, looks like it's just dust. Yeah, this version of Reneus is pretty awful. The wheel color is particularly interesting. Uh, don't really understand that. This was the Reneus that was sold in this three pack, obviously, it was sold by itself, and then it was also sold in the Reneus and the roller coaster set. 
The wheel color makes no sense. It, it, I mean, this this whole version of Reneas is just awful. The face, the face um, does not really look like Reneas, but it's still a great face. And people actually use this Reneas face, I want to say, for a bunch of their customs. I want to say, maybe um, when Hero the Japanese Train sent me my Merlin custom, I think he used maybe the 2013 Reneas face. But anyway. For a while there, Reneus never really had a good face. Reneus was just a conundrum, the poor engine. He's one of my favorites, but he has just received a whole lot of a whole lot of uh, disservice um, over the years. So yeah, this Reneus, he's even the wrong color. He's the same color as the one from the 90s, um, but technically it's not the right color. So you know people get all in a tizzy about that. But uh, Reneus, yeah. I have in my collection. I actually do have this version of Reneas in the box by itself. I've had that for a couple of years, but I've just never unboxed it because it's from like 2008, 2009. Didn't want to take it out of the box. So these Rock Crusher cars are not anything special because they've been re-released and redone a couple of times. This is the Boulder car. I think they even did a, a three-pack with Scar Lowy from the Blue Mountain uh, Mystery era. And it was uh, Scar Lowy, I think it was technically called Scar Lowy in the gravel cars, but I want to say it was the same type of thing we got going on here. Um, still, a really nice um, detailing here. The rock is unintentionally kind of a grayish blue, which maybe inspired Blue Mountain Mystery along the line. And then we have the rock crushing car, the conveyor belt car. Um, does it, isn't it supposed to, I thought it was supposed to move. Oh, I don't see anything on the bottom of the wheels here, so... Hmm. Well, then how do you... Is it more of a manual thing? I'm thinking... Let me... Where's the box? I'm thinking... The conveyor... Okay, it's at the top here. Trust me, folks. Right here. This is what I'm reading. Conveyor belt spins as the rocks tumble. Um... I do not see that happening on my version, which could be wrong. I mean, let me get this in a train here. Nope. Nope. Okay. It's okay. I'm not a kid anymore. I can live without it. It's just kind of interesting. But there you go. When you manually spin this, maybe you are supposed to manually spin it. Who? Do, what, what do I know? Um, but when you manually spin it, you can see the rocks kind of bounce up and down, which is really cool. So overall, really cool three pack, just poorly executed in my opinion. These guys aren't bad. A lot of plastic in here, but oh my gosh, this Reneus, um, if you weren't mint <laughs> and straight out of the box, I would probably throw you away, honestly. But it's just kind of a fun reminder as to what what the Thomas and Friends Wooden Railway merchandise line used to be all about. So there you go, folks. You have Reneus and the Rock Crusher cars may or may not be working. I'm not 100% sure at the moment, but very happy to have these in my collection. In the first part of this unboxing video, I absolutely destroyed the Tomy version of Diesel 10. I don't know how much better this item is going to be, but let's take a look at it. Let's see, I bought this for $14.99, got this recently on my East Coast travels. Um, is he a first? Oh, he is a first run. He's got the pamphlet in there. So, fun fact, I don't want to talk too much about Diesel 10's history in the Thomas Wooden Railway line because I am planning on doing a mega review slash discussion on this character in the future. Um, but there's actually two versions of this character. It has something to do with the back area here. That part, the first run it's plastic, the second run it's not. Something weird like that. You can read all up on it on the internet because that's where I get all of my information from anyway. I didn't even realize there were um, multiple versions of Mattel Diesel 10 until I was doing some casual research one day. So, I'm trying to, oh yeah, I just got this in a store. It was on that day I went around with Enterprising Engine 93 and a Jolly Good Idea Films, actually. So, um, yeah, this is from the United States, $14.99 about, I've, I've seen this as high as $18, so 15 bucks wasn't that crazy. We got a pamphlet, yay, with Butch and Birdie prominently seen. Uh, got a ton of these, I'll put it off to the side. So, man, this version of Diesel 10, Unfortunately, we still have this very weird smiling face. The pupils are smaller. If you, you know, pupil size is actually kind of important because you go from, you go from something like this. Smaller pupils make you abs look absolutely crazy. Bigger pupils make you look more friendly and cuddly, but then you, I think you also get more toy-like, if that makes sense. For example, just take a look at a picture of Wooden Railway Thomas throughout the years, and his pupils continue to grow and grow and grow. 
and he looks less like a hundred year old steam train and more like a children's toy, but that's another discussion. So this version of Diesel, um, very well built. Plastic bogies, we've been over that before. Not that big of a deal. The claw here, Pinchy, still works as his predecessors, just back and forth. We don't have any type of articulation in that area. Um, the paint here, let me just bring this along again. I didn't want to do this because I'm playing a whole nother video, but um, this paint's definitely darker. Of course, there were some issues with Pinchy that I talked about when I unboxed this in the first part of the video. But otherwise, Diesel 10's looking pretty good here. Uh, the difference from what I can remember, the difference in these two versions, they were both made by Mattel. This is the first run version, and when they um, brought them back for the second run, around maybe, you know, late 2013, 2014, 2015, something like that, they changed this back area here so that I want to say the plastic stops right about here, and the back part of this is wood. It's something to do with that, but basically this is a whole area of contention that I had no idea existed until I was doing some research. So... I'm obviously very biased um, towards the very first version of Diesel 10 that has the angry face. It's the one I grew up with. It's the one that I think Diesel 10 should be represented as. But this version of Diesel 10, you know, isn't that bad. The face, if we're going to have a, a smiling, happy Diesel 10 face, I'd take this one over this one. Um, I just, you know, there's part of me, you know, I talked about the maniac style face here you know welcome to the diesel works Percy and it's kind of funny because it looks like diesel 10's losing his mind but this is just the better face it's more of a, a subtle smiley face it's not as bad as like the wood face or anything like that but yeah not a whole else left to say just a nice quality toy you pick it up I miss these bogeys on these things I mean you know you guys know the wood version of diesel 10 shrunk down by a lot so Man, this, is, this just feels nice to pick up and hold, and it feels like a quality toy, and man, back to the good old days. So other than that, I'm trying to think of something else to say. Yeah, not my favorite version of Diesel 10, but I definitely consider it, in just my opinion, I consider it better than this one, but feel free to disagree with me and tell me why in the comments below. Other than that, uh, let's move on to our next item. I've done so many unboxing videos in the past, it's hard to remember what I've talked about and what I haven't talked about. So I could be wrong in this area, but I believe, I don't think I've ever unboxed something that hasn't been Thomas related in these massive unboxing videos. I could be wrong, I'm getting old, my mind's starting to fail, but this is um, a little bit of something different. It's from Brio. And the reason why I have this in my collection, I still have one in the box, I found another one. Uh, the reason why I have this in my collection, first of all, dirt cheap. Um, that may be a little bit exaggerated, I don't know. Brio is more expensive than Thomas Wooden Railway. So seven bucks at Tuesday morning. It's interesting, we got a piece of tape here. And I think, oh, well that didn't work out too well. I think the reason this is covered is because this is actually a special edition engine that is that was released by Brio back in 2017. And I think, Okay, you guys can start to see, it's that's going to say Special Edition 2017 on it, I'm pretty sure. So, if I remember correctly, Brio comes along, they release a Special Edition engine every year, but since this is being resold at another thing, I don't think the people at either Brio or Tuesday Morning, they don't want you to know it's a Special Edition engine that should be maybe worth more, or maybe you'll try to resell it or something like that. It's, it's very interesting as to why they covered this up. I'm sure there's a reason. But um, let's get this out of the box. What's interesting on the back here, let me tilt the camera up so I can get a good shot of this. Uh, oh. All right, uh, there we go. This FSC, that's the same stuff that the Thomas Wood engines are made out of. And I don't really know a whole lot about that company, but it's, it's worth noting because on the wood engines, on the wood packaging, um, it says that they're made from, I don't know what's the term, managed wood from well-managed forests, basically, is, is what they're promoting. So um, I'm having a heck of a time getting this out of here. Tried, I'm trying to pull away the plastic. Oh, here we go. Finally got a grip on life. Not the most graceful unboxing. 
So let's see what this looks like. And it's funny, when this was released in 2017, it was just like, oh, it's your generic Brio engine. And if it wasn't obvious, it says 2017 right there. <laughs> um, this engine actually bears a very, very similar look to Bo from Big World Big Adventures. That's kind of the whole point of why I'm unboxing this video and maybe you can kind of see where this is going with a potential custom. But again, that's kind of far away. So let's talk about this engine. It's a special edition Brio engine. Oh, is it really? Oh. I thought it was just backward in the box. This looks way more natural to me, but apparently you're supposed to connect it that way. Okay. That's how I thought it would have gone. This looks backwards to me. Maybe that's <laughs> maybe that's just me. But anyway, um, this is based on an American steam locomotive. And um, again, Big World Big Adventures didn't happen until 2018. So Brio didn't know it at the time. But they were actually releasing the basis for Bo <laughs> accidentally. What's funny, though, I actually have another one of these in my collection. I have one new in the box. And then this is actually just a, a tank engine that was released by Brio. It's been released by Brio in the past, and it's just this front part. It's just a tank engine that goes choo-choo like this, and then they just stuck a tender on it for this release, and all of a sudden you have a tender engine that looks like Bo. So I'm not saying I'm gonna do a custom of Bo in the future. The problem is we need a face that works for Bo, and as of right now, there's no merchandise. There's no Trackmaster merchandise or Adventures or Push Along. Um, apparently there's a wood version that was supposed to come out completely unpainted. Now they're going to bring out a painted version. So this idea of a custom is definitely on hold till something like that happens. But we don't, I mean, this is really cool for me because this is something we do not see with Thomas Wooden Railway engines. This moving side rod right here. We just have to pretend that the side rod is there. Um, it's funny, I posted a tweet back in 2017 when this um, came out. I was like, you know what, with the rumors that are going around, I bet you what's going to happen with Thomas Wood is that we're going to get unpainted, you know, unfinished bases with limited paint here and there. And that's exactly what happened. I mean, this looks like, if you, if you put Bo's face on this and got rid of the Brio, you're looking at Thomas and Friends Wood Bow, right there, without a doubt. So this was actually kind of a precursor to the Wood era, and we didn't even know it. But this is really nice. Um, the gold funnel right here is is really uh, interesting. Underneath, of course, the Brio engines don't have a name, but we got some type of code there in case something were to ever happen. Nothing on the tender, though. And yeah, this is this will take some time getting used to. I guess I see it now. I see it, you know, that the this is open, you know, from the engine so that the driver and the fireman can easily access the coal. And then it's just kind of a rounded area where the coal area is just supposed to be rounded off. I guess I can see it now. The problem is, is in my head, I had it like this. And I think if this was released by Thomas and Friends, it would be facing this way. So, okay, I'm a little bit more comfortable with this engine than I was at the start. Uh, but yeah, you stick you stick Bo's face on there and you got a custom right away. So um, pretty nice piece considering it was like seven bucks, um, twenty dollars for something like this. Especially since I don't collect Brio, was a bit of a stretch. However, I do have one still on the box that I don't know what I'll do with. But you have the plastic cow catcher on the front. The wheels are plastic. Um, Brio is way more. I guess, um, free to use plastic in their toy trains than Thomas Wooden Railway was. But then by the end of it, I think both companies were using a fair amount of plastic. Um, it's just so funny that this was a special edition engine and it's got 2017 plastered all of it, plastered all over it. Yet on the packaging, they were really trying to convince you that no, it's, it's not a special edition engine or anything like that. So I ended up buying this, um, not to create a bow custom, but simply because you know, Brio is obviously more focused on modern engines, and so steam trains really aren't included a whole lot. But this just kind of appealed to me, and I saw it for such a cheap price that I thought, you know what, it looks really nice. So, um, yeah, the un unpainted, unfinished parts I don't really care about because this isn't Thomas Wooden Railway. Um, and since it's a special edition engine, it's like, oh, it, it, maybe it's not supposed to be fully painted, that type of thing. And that, that brings to me to a whole nother section where I could talk about, you know, imagine if Thomas Wood wasn't a thing, but for the 25th anniversary of Thomas and Friends Wooden Railway, they had, re they had released a Thomas and Friends Wood version of Thomas that was half painted. Ima imagine how much money 
Mattel could have made. It would have been pretty incredible. But uh, guys, I don't think you'll be seeing this engine in a video anytime soon. If we get a Thomas Wood bow and the face fits, who knows? It could be the basis for a future custom. But other than that, this is just kind of a fun little engine that I wanted to buy because I thought it looked cool. And um, it's just going to sit nicely in my collection until I find something to do with it. All right, friends, it's time for another destination to be unboxed. And this is an item that is essential for any Thomas Wooden Railway layout. With all of the crashes and smashes that take place on your layout, you need to have a place for the passengers and the engines to go in case they get absolutely wrecked. This is the Rescue Hospital. Um, I found it on Craigslist on the East Coast. It actually came from the same seller as the Ellsbridge Station. So hopefully, Hopefully we're gonna unbox this and I'm not gonna get any nasty surprises. Um, but what's interesting, I didn't even realize this. It come, I knew it came with the, the hospital and the ambulance. I did not know it came with Harold. I just thought that was on here just to make you wanna buy it and that sort of thing. So that was a bit of a pleasant surprise. Uh, the back here, some nice artwork. I'm gonna read this really quick. It's Harold to the rescue when there's an emergency in Sodor. When there's an emergency in Sodor, it should be on Sodor. Harold heads off to the rescue hospital. As he lands on the special helipad, helipad, the rescue team is set into action as the ambulance rushes off on the roadways to assist in the next rescue. That was a bit of a handful. Um, this was definitely a precursor to the search and rescue system. Uh, I'm very nervous to unbox this, guys. I don't know what I'm gonna find. Ooh, look at this. Start your kids on the right track with fun-filled videos and DVDs from Thomas and Friends. Wow. That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's really awesome. Oh, I had a lot of these DVDs as a kid. I think I had Cranky Bugs. I think I had these. Maybe that one. Definitely that one. Definitely that one. Spills and Chills. Oh, Thomas's Trackside Tunes. Definitely. Oh, Sing Along Stories. Yep. So, wow, that is a throwback. That, that's pretty cool to include there. We got a pamphlet from 2002, it looks like. And let me check the box. Let's see, 2002, right when all of this roadway stuff was kicking off. All right, if any dead bugs pop out, I apologize. Oh, it looks pretty clean, okay. Thank goodness. <laughs> so, hospital's upside down right now. I presume we got Harold and the ambulance in here. Oh, this thing's just gonna pop right out. Look at that. No cutting, no wires, no nothing. So simple. I like that a lot. <laughs> All right, this unboxing, especially with uh, this right here, this unboxing is off to a great start. I am so pumped to see what we got here. All right, this hospital. I've almost, this has almost come into my collection a couple of times. Um, but for one reason or another, it's something I've never really been able to nail down. Let's see, beautiful artwork. I remember as a kid, I, I would see this on play tables all the time because there was this one play table that always had it. Ghislaine Thomas Limited 2002. Oh, there we go. Okay, so you press the top. This is what I was assuming. You press the top and the doors open on the side. I'll do it one more time. Um, we also, this is a roadway destination. So this will be road right here. We do have a piece of normal track. And um, what I love, what I absolutely love is that this piece of track does not have to be connected to this. It doesn't have those knobs on the side. It doesn't have any magnets. You can stick this in the middle of nowhere all by itself and it will work perfectly fine. Um, I, this comes with a ramp, so you don't need to have any, sorry for the jingling, that's my cat again. You don't need to have any interaction with the track with this type of destination. This is how all destinations should be paired. They should give you a piece of track, but they should not force you to make the engines come up and interact with this destination if they don't want to. It's a bit of a weird one because if you know anything about hospitals, these this looks like the waiting room right here. It even says emergency. So unless Thomas is gonna come up with Annie and Clarabelle and drop off a severely injured person, from from his coaches I, I don't really know why that's necessary but anyway i'm loving this destination so far it's actually pretty heavy and it's it's uh solid all the way through plastic wise the doors these little things up here that i think are supposed to represent like landing lights and then of course the outer edge of this right here is wood but then the, the press part 
press part is not. Oh, so we got a little ramp on the inside, if you guys can see there. And it just raises the ramp a little bit so you can actually store the ambulance inside. Let's take a look here. All right, there's appears to be no easy way to get these guys out of here. I guess I'll have to... Ugh. That's interesting. What a weird box. All right, so... There's the ramp. I was making sure that was included. So the great thing about this is if you have no road pieces, you don't want to... I mean, look, this has road on the bottom. So you can extend it like this. Sorry for the bad angle. You can extend it like that. Or if you don't even want to mess with it, you just put it right there and boom, your uh, your ambulance just runs around. So I actually do have an ambulance al already. I bought it off of eBay. Uh, unfortunately, it's in a giant bin off to my uh, left-hand side that I have no idea where it is. But that one was used, this one's new. I'm guessing they're the same. I can't imagine there being two different versions of the ambulance, but who, who knows, there might be. Just your generic front here. Let me take a look at, um, let's see, where is it? Let's see, so this is the cement lorry that I introduced in the last part of the unboxing video. The grill's very similar. And then there was another one, here's the scrap lorry. Right? Sodor Scrap Lorry. There we go. The grills are the same. Pretty close to being the same. Um, but I'm pretty sure this mold was reused for a couple of different things. This is a very nice item. Um, off the top of my head, I don't know if the, the ambulance was ever seen in the TV series. I want to say there was an episode for the regatta and that one guy was injured and they took him away in an ambulance. That was from season three, I'm guessing. I, I Gosh, it's been such a long time. Um, really need to brush up on my, my Thomas knowledge. That's cool though. The top of this is really cool. So we got Sodor Ambulance with like the, the first aid cross sign there. Very cool. And then we got Harold, which was a complete surprise. Um, don't know what I'm going to do with this Harold. I have one from my childhood that's in pretty good condition. And um, then I have like the newer versions. I even have the Wood Harold. So um, yeah, this is very, very nice. For those who don't have this version of Harold, this part right here is wood and then kind of the landing area. I don't know, I'm not really up to date on my um, specific terminology when it comes to helicopters, but the landing area here, it's plastic. No name on the bottom. I don't know, that's interesting. The ambulance has a name. This is from 2002. I don't see a date on this either. So I wonder if this was just left over from the 90s or if they just never bothered to put Harold's name on the bottom or if this is just a weird one. But then the pla uh, the back area here is also plastic. So this is, this is a very classic version of Harold that was sold for a number of years. But the way this is supposed to work, let me put this together. So I'm not gonna mess around with this right now. I'm gonna put the ambulance in there. I'll put the track right here just so we have something to look at. And then up to the sky, is it a bird, is it a plane? No, it's Harold the helicopter coming in. And since he's a massive heavy helicopter, let me readjust the camera so that you guys get to see. Whoops. He comes in and lands, and since he's so heavy, he presses down, and there goes the ambulance. <laughs> very, very cool. So, you can either hold your ambulance hostage in there. I'm gonna put this track here to stop it. Or, I mean, as I would have it, I would have a little bit of a, a gap right here. Maybe just find a little bit of roadway that I would just sit the ambulance on. But wow, what a destination. I thought about buying this used for a really long time. Um, I, think there were, I think I even lost an auction on eBay to this because uh, it was used. But the thing is, since it's a lot of wood paint, a lot of white wood paint, it chips very, very easily. So I see these pop up all the time with just it being totally trash and I don't mind buying stuff used at all it's a great way to get things for less than face value um, but then there's certain items out there that you just don't want looking completely destroyed and this is kind of one of them so I love this ambulance I'm indifferent to Harold because I already have one but it's still a nice inclusion and this hospital I, I worked it around for you guys it is it is a really nice piece um, just that classic learning curve Devotion to detail and everything is really really nice. So the two des the two big destinations actually I mean I had a, I had four <laughs> I had the echo tunnel, which is great I had the um, Sodor scrapyard, which I was really impressed with the cement works not so much But this hospital I mean three out of four ain't bad um, very very uh, pleasantly surprised with this destination um, hoping to find a place for this um, on my next layout video 
I'm trying to, I, off the top of my head, I cannot remember if there is actually a specific spot for the, the Sodor Hospital on the giant island of Sodor map, but you know, you'd think most towns on Sodor would have to have a hospital in case something were to happen. So I'll think of something creative for this destination. In the meantime, we're almost done with this unboxing video. I have one other item that I want to unbox. And then I think, I'll uh, put everything up on the table for you guys to see. We'll take a look at the damages, and um, that'll be the end of this one. So stay tuned, guys. Let me clear off this table and get my next item ready to show. Here we go, friends. We're on to the last item. It is Talking Railway Series Billy. <laughs> There's a reason why I saved this for last, and you're probably wondering, Thomas Wooden Railway, what are you doing looking at a Talking Railway Series engine, especially Billy of all engines? Well, back in 2008, 2009, these types of engines and destinations were the hot thing on the Thomas Wooden Railway market. And by hot thing, I mean they did not sell very well, and that's why they only lasted like a year or two. So we had all the main engines. The big thing with these engines is that they would talk to the destinations. The engines themselves don't talk. If you look underneath here, there's no talking mechanism. It's just there's something in the magnets that relays, I presume, like a radio frequency to the destination, and that's why Sir Topham Hat is featured so prominently because it would come through with Sir Topham Hatt's voice. So, um, yeah, they released all of the major engines in this line. I remember when this came out, I was like, yeah, it's cool, but is it something I'm going to waste my money on? Absolutely not. So we're looking at 2009 um, Galane. These were probably in stores till around, you know, 2010 or so. These did not catch on by, uh, by a long shot. But I'm actually going to unbox Talking Billy here, and I saved this one for last because this has something to do with my series. And I know not a whole lot of people watch my videos, and I know a lot of people especially don't watch the entirety of my videos, but for you lucky people that have stayed around, we're probably over the hour long mark on this video, and then if you include the first part, I mean this is the last item in a two part unboxing video. Not many people are going to know that this item exists, but as a little thank you for watching the whole video, I'm going to give you guys the inside scoop to this island, or island, this item, excuse me. So, um, yeah, Talking Railway Series Billy and the packaging. I can't remember, I paid a little bit for this item because actually, you know, there's, you will find Talking Railway Series, um, you know, Thomas, Percy, all of the common engines for a decent price. I actually do have a new unboxed Percy that I've saved. But the stranger engines like Billy and Molly, and off the top of my head, I don't think there was ever a Neville, but those stranger engines are a little bit harder to find. And yes, Talking Railway Series Billy does show up used, um, but I wanted one new because I'm planning on using this in my series. So as I talked about, really, this is just a stock standard normal Billy, except the magnets are gold, and that's what kind of makes them cool. Underneath here, we have some recall information. We have um, Billy's name in gold, and then we also have, it looks like Thomas with some Wi-Fi waves coming off of them. That's just to let you know that, hey, this is a talking engine. By the time these engines were introduced, especially me, I had already built up my collection so much that it's like, do I really want to waste my money on these engines that I know I'm not going to use in my series? And the answer was no. So that's why I've never gone out, even though I love collecting, you know, different versions and variations of characters, I've never had, I've never seen the appeal, never had the want to, you know, collect these just because they would sit on a shelf and do nothing. However, with this version of Billy, I am planning on doing something in my series with them. And you guessed it, it has something to do with these gold magnets right here, which would act as the couplers or the, the buffer beam to Billy. So I don't know exactly what I'm going to do, but this has been a work in progress. I'll tell you that. I've been looking for one of these on eBay for a couple of years. And like I said, I was looking for one that was new because the Billy that I use in my series is still in pristine condition, and I didn't want to swap out um, this uh, Talking Railway series Billy with the gold magnets and have them be all beat up and crusty looking and everything like that. So if you wait long enough on eBay and you're willing to pay you know, a decent amount of money, you can find pretty much anything. That's not even just Thomas Wooden Railway related. That's just eBay in general. So yeah, this Billy I'm really excited about. I have, I've had this guy in my collection for pretty close to a year now, but I saved him because I wanted to unbox him. And so as a little thank you for watching this very, very, very long unboxing video, I'll let you guys know that he is going to appear in a future episode of my series. It's going to have something to do with these gold couplings. Um, 
uh, other than that, I, I can't really tell you else much just because I don't know the specifics or anything like that. But hey, you know, the great thing, the reason why I chose Billy for all this is when you look at all of the engines that received um, Talking Railway Series forms with the Golden Magnets, you have the Steam Team, but the problem is, is I don't use that version of the Steam Team in my series. You have Rosie is a good one. Uh, Pink Rosie is a good one, but I uh, elected to go with Billy, and then Molly is actually pretty rare and hard to find, and she's expensive. So I ended up sticking with Billy, and I was just thinking about the characters, and I was like, you know what, building uh, Billy with gold magnets would make for a better story, in my opinion, than Molly with gold magnets or Rosie or something like that. So that's why I settled on Billy. However, it has been a process to try to get him. It's taken a while. This is something I've wanted to do for a couple of years now, and I only just recently... Well, recently, as in within the past year or so, ended up getting him. And obviously, I couldn't make an episode about him when he was still in the packaging. So I had to wait for my next unboxing video to, to kind of get the ball rolling on this thing. But there you go, friends. That's uh, Talking Railway Series Billy. Like I said, he doesn't have a voice chip or talking mechanism within him. You would bring him up in the vicinity of these Talking um, Railway Series destinations like Great Waterton, um, I think even they redid Great Waterton Station and turned it into Maithwaite Station. There was a um, kind of like a, a, a quarry mine tunnel that was introduced in one of the sets. Um, there was also a Talking Cranky, and they did a couple of destinations, but right from the get-go, um, this series was not super popular. And it's partially because the beauty of Thomas Wooden Railway is that kids like having control over what the story's about. Are you really that amazed when you roll Billy up and Sir Topham Hat comes in and says, Billy, you are to go to the docks and blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, I'm the storyteller. Billy, said Sir Topham Hat, you are to go to the docks. And away Billy goes. So that's my personal reason as to why this series didn't succeed. It did not succeed in the slightest. I mean, they were only sold for like a year or two after. And then on top of that, we had the early engineers line that was introduced around the same time. So all of a sudden we have normal Billy, we have Talking Railway Series Billy. I don't think there was ever an early Engineers Billy release, but you have all those engines competing for the same, competing for your attention on the store shelves. Like, pick me, pick me. And that might have been one of the reasons why Learning Curve um, and Tomy came along and elected to sell it to somebody else because maybe they were tired of dealing with all these different merchandise lines. So anyway, guys, that's the last item I'm going to unbox. Give me a few moments. I'm going to, um, I think I'll put all of the engines that I've unboxed boxed on the table for you all to see and then I'll change the scenery one more time we'll take a look at all of the trash that has accumulated all right everybody here is everything that has been unboxed over the course of these two parts a lot of great things I'm very happy with the the stuff I've bought sometimes it's hit or miss you don't really know what you're going to get until you take it out of the box but honestly I'm pretty happy with everything that I have here not too many surprises along the way with this unboxing video. We've had crazier things in the past. Uh, just to recap, we got Easter Rosie, um, two-thirds of the Reneus and the Rock Crusher pack. We got 2005 Diesel, 2017 Diesel. We got some risers in the back. That is the Scrapyard, the Hospital with Harold, and the Ambulance. We got Mattel Bash, sorry, Mattel Dash, uh, Mattel Iron Airy, Iron Burt, we got a crossing sign back there. We have James Goes Buzz Buzz. Two versions of Reneus, the uh, Tomy version on the left and the Learning Curve version on the right. The Echo Tunnel, along with more risers and a stop sign. Mattel Ferdinand, uh, first part of Thomas and the Stinky Cheese. We got the Cement Factory in the background with a Cement Lorry. More risers, Tomy 2012-2011 Diesel 10, Mattel Diesel 10, and we have a Brio engine and the other half of that Thomas um, and the Stinky Cheese Pack. Along with the stuff out front, we've got Iron Airy slash Iron Burt, whatever you want to call them there. We've got 20, I don't know why it's not focusing, there we go, we got 2017 Timothy, 20, we'll just call it Tommy Peter Sam, Tommy Sir Handel, and Golden Magnets Coupling Billy. Wow along with miscellaneous track that you see that the engines are on. So guys, what a fun unboxing video, but it's not done yet. Um, I have all the trash and the packaging that I've kept um, over the course of these two parts. So let's take a look at that. Give me just one moment. I think instead of doing a massive overview shot of everything, I'm gonna kinda do a time-lapse video of all of the trash piling up. So let's start things off 
I'm just, I'm just gonna start chucking stuff. We got the track accessory pack, diesel 10. I'm gonna grab things from left to right, and some of this stuff I am actually going to throw away or recycle. Some of it I'm going to keep. Some of these boxes that I'm throwing up are actually in, in pretty good shape, so um, <laughs> I don't wanna quite get rid of them. I don't know what I'm going to do with them, but um, I figure, you know, they're, either I can hold them on, onto them for a while, Oh boy, this is piling up pretty quick. Um, <laughs> had a couple of things fall off there. I might have to dump those on at the end. Either I can hold on to them for a little bit. Oh. <laughs> this is right on the edge here. I'll just leave that there. I can hold on to them for a little bit or I will give them to some of my friends. Here we go, folks. Just a whole bunch of stuff. Yikes. All right, we got, we're on to the smaller packaging, Iron Airy, Iron Burt, Ferdinand, just some generic track. I think that's Reneus's packaging. Um, <laughs> guys can't really see much, unfortunately, because all that big stuff took up quite a lot of space. We got James Goes Buzz Buzz, definitely throwing that package away. Um, let's see, I'm almost done here. I don't know if this is entertaining or not, but I will do one last overview shot. I will pile everything up on the table. I've got tissue paper here that's not wanting to go on the table. Oh, I hit the camera, sorry. I'm using, uh, I'm filming on a table, so I've, I've kind of stockpiled some stuff underneath. All right, we're almost done. Just, this is a 2005 diesel packaging going up there. And then let me throw back everything that fell off. It's the big stuff. Echo Tunnel fell off again. There we go. Uh, riser box, I'll throw that in the back. This stuff, that fell off. Stay on, thank you. There we go. Cement works, nope. <laughs> Maybe, no. All right, it'll get up there. Uh, okay. Is that everything? I had a couple more things fall off. I'll be nice and just pile that stuff up on the front right there. I believe that is it. Oh, don't, for, don't forget that. Believe that's it. Uh, we got some instructions here. Something nice to look at. Um, let me zoom out and show you guys the full damage that we have here. So this is what we're looking at. This is everything piled onto the table. Um, got a lot of big boxes that kind of you're not able to really see what's underneath. I will remove a couple of these just so we can see. All of the early stuff I threw on is totally gone. But yes, I think in one of my earlier unboxing videos I said I was just gonna throw this stuff away, but I actually do recycle everything that I can. You can recycle the plastic, obviously the cardboard packaging, everything like that. So we got a nice haul here, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Bit of a, a fun one. I love these impromptu, unscripted videos that I can just kinda show off and do whatever I want. So thank you everybody. This has been the 2019 unboxing video. I hope you guys had a good time and thanks for watching.